what you want me to be Because I need your help Be what you want me to be So help me, oh Lord Be what you want me to be Help me, oh Lord Be what you want me to be Help me, oh Lord Be what you want me to be Because I need your help Be what you want me to be So help me, oh Lord Be what you want me to be Help me, oh Lord what you want me to be, help me, oh Lord, be what you want me to be, because I need your help, be what you want me to be, help me, oh Lord, be what you want me to be. towards heaven. Yeah. Yeah. Heavenly Father, y'all, we thank you for allowing us yeah. to be here yes. one more time to hear to hear your words this night, Lord God. We yeah, pray that Yahweh. we may take and apply to our life, that we may uh, do to do according to what your will is. Yeah. Yeah. Father, y'all, we pray that you be with those that's on the dangerous roads and highways. Yeah. Keep them safe as they press their way towards here. Be with the saints yeah. of Lubbock, Mother Connie, yeah. and Sinton, yeah. and those in Mexico, Lord Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. And continue to be with them. In your sons of Yahshua Messiah. Shall I say amen. amen. I'd like to read a scripture out of Psalms 122 and 1. Verses, I was glad when they said unto me, yes, Let us go into the house of Yahweh. Yes, or, or our feet shall stand within thy gates, O Jerusalem. Yes, Jerusalem is built as a city that is compacted together. Whether the tribes go up, the tribes of Yahweh, unto the testimony of Israel to give thanks unto the name of the Lord. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Let's all remain standing. Uh, let's uh, receive Evangelist Davis by saying praise Yahweh. Praise, praise Yahweh. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, saints. Praise Yahweh. You can all be seated. I truly thank Yahweh for another evening to come out to his house to hear words commanded Amen. from the Most High God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's always a, always a good night to come here. Always an 
opportunity to see where we stand with Yahweh. Time to examine ourselves. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The things we always do, we come together. You know, hopefully your meditation has been on things above and not on Amen. things on the earth. Amen. Hopefully you've been talking to Yahweh this day, you know, asking him. Because this Amen. is the time when you come out and you're, you know, you'll, those things are answered Amen. from Yahweh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we know how Yahweh works by this time. You know, it's the salvation is thing worth we're after. It doesn't come in a way in which we, in a way that we're, you know, what that we're looking for in the way that we want things to go. Hallelujah. So we ask you to, you know, give all your, catch all your cares upon Yahweh because he cares for us, all of us. Hallelujah. As always, we say greetings to those in, that are watching over Facebook, of course, those to Mexico and all those that are, that are viewing us. We say greetings to you as well. But saints, let's get ready to hear Yahweh speak to us. We know that you know, we're, we come to this place, we're blessed because we know that the Almighty speaks to us. Amen. We know that, uh, that we aren't led by men, you know, preaching themselves, but Amen. give themselves over so Yahweh uses them to speak to us. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So we ask you to get your Bibles out and get ready to follow along with the words that goes forth. Yes, this time, I want to see what the man of God would have to bring forth Amen. this time. This time, saints, let us all rise. Let's receive our beloved Apostle Hurley by saying, Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, Praise Yahweh saints. Is Yahweh good? Amen. Amen. He is good. And we should be glad to be here tonight. You can be seated. Y'all can call me Apostle Tuesday night if you want to. You know, I, I want to get up here and be a be an instrument of Yahweh as much as possible. So I want to make room for these other men and uh, hopefully Pastor Bibbs will be getting well soon so he can come back and, you know, take his spot amongst the ranks and uh, be able to have his opportunity to come up and testify of the healing that we all know that Yahweh is going to bless him with because uh, Pastor Bibbs is a good man. He's had his struggles, his up and downs, just like we all have. And, and uh, Yahweh's teaching him things. Even with the sickness, and I, I, I believe he's doing the same thing with all of us in our lives. And uh, I have absolutely no doubt from what I've seen in the man that, that, that uh, Yahweh is shaping and molding Pastor Bibbs to be what the Spirit has always known for him to be, has always seen him to be in the Spirit's eye. And uh, I can't wait to see you, Pastor Bibbs. See you back. We know that... Uh, Everything works together for the good. And uh, Yahweh had to slow you down somehow, working so hard and, and, uh, and, and trying to do all this and all that. Yahweh wants you just to focus on, on him, put him first, and he's going to work everything out. And I, I, the only reason why I have this faith and this mind is because of what I have seen Yahweh do in you and in me. We, we've been around long enough to where we know how he works, don't we? Amen. Hallelujah. Does he stop letting things happen to you that you don't want to have happen to you? Or does he actually use those things most of all to shape you? To be the person that he's always been calling for you to be. And he's unrelenting. He does not relent in his uh, pursuit to perfect you. And he is good at what he does. He's going to perfect you. Yes, He's going to make you everything that he wants you to be. Amen. And I'm a living witness because I see him doing it in you. Yes. I'm so thankful for, uh, you know, being blessed to come into this way of uh, this church at a young age of 20 years old and being blessed with a wife and three beautiful children and, and friends such as you all are. And of course, the bishops, the fivefold ministry and the, uh, the deacons and, and, and just the, everything about the church. Amen. Amen. This is the place to be yes, Thank you, Yahweh. in the world. They have the saying, I don't care what you say. That's funny right there. Or I don't care what anybody has to say. I really don't care what anybody has to say about this church. Amen. I really don't. Hallelujah. I've I've. I've listened to Satan over the years and I've listened to his children 
all those people that don't want to be part of this thing Amen. are children of the devil. Yes, Lord. I just said I don't care what they have to say. Yes, Lord. There's a reason why I don't care what somebody has to say. Amen. The only people that I don't care what they have to say are children of the devil. Yes, Lord. You got to call it like it is. Amen. You read your whole entire Bible and it talks about false prophets. And, yes, Lord. You know, children of perdition, yeah. sons of perdition, uh, you know, all those bad things. Antichrist. Yes. Yes. Those are the kind of words most preachers don't want to say nowadays. Yes. Amen. They definitely don't say it to their friends and loved ones whenever they're because they don't ever take a stand for righteousness. Amen. But we're here tonight. The fact that we're in this place right yes. now. Is yes. because we're taking a stand for righteousness. Amen. 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 If you're old enough to have decided that you were coming to this church today. Hallelujah. Some of you, you didn't have a choice. Little Chris, you didn't have a choice. Your dad was bringing you to church. Your mom was going to bring you to church whether you wanted to or not. You look tired, Sister Rachel. You tired? A little. You look like you're faking it till you make it. Keep on faking it. You look like me when I'm tired. We usually have a lot of energy. When we try to go through the motions of, oh, yeah, praise the Lord. Then you can tell somebody's been whooped today. And just like on your Marco Polo. Yes. That was a funny Marco Polo. The one where you were talking about all the things in your life to give you a good enough reason to be tired. You got that same look on your face right now that you did in that Marco Polo. Before you started explaining yourself in that Marco Polo, I said, she's tired. Look at her eye. One of her eyes is almost closed. But you see, in this, in this way, you're going you're gonna to go all in for your God, whether you're tired or not. You're not going to wait till you're in your best, most refreshed state. Always sitting around waiting before you present anything. No, it's it's so in you that you want to present it even when you're exhausted. There's never a time where you're not going to come in here here and give all you got. Even if all you have that night may not be near as much as you had the night before. You're going to give it all. Amen. You're going to give it all. You know, you're going to. There's two kinds of miracles. Now, I'm talking about financial miracles that Yahweh does in the church. Amen. Number one, the first kind of financial miracle that Yahweh does in the church is whenever he, you love Yahweh enough to do right with your finances. Amen. That is a miracle Amen. because we're so selfish oh, yeah. and and. The same goes with your energy. Yes, Lord. Okay? Yes. It's a miracle that we would give our energy like we're doing. Yes, Yahweh. It's a miracle that we would give our finances the way we're doing. Amen. 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 What, what, what's another? Another. It's just a miracle that we would uh, give our health yes, Lord. the way that we do. Amen. To, to come in here even when we're sick. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. To take in strangers even though we're... The COVID is in the land. Right. Amen. Amen. And, and not to have fear. There's not one saint in here who thinks they should have to wear a mask. Amen. Sometimes I hear it in the saints that you can tell they kind of think they should be wearing one. Amen. That means your mindset is easily slipping into the mindset of the world. Amen. Now, we understand why Apostle Washington told us wear a mask. It could be that we have COVID, but we don't have any symptoms and we pass it on to some sinners in the church. But really, you don't have any control over that. It's going to either it's going to get passed on or it's not. Or some people might not come to church if you don't have a mask on. And so you put the mask on, even though, you know, good and well, that that COVID could slip straight through the mask and go right to the person who. Is appointed to have to, Amen. to get it. Yes. But look what we're doing. It is a miracle. This change in our lives. 
how we're giving ourselves fully over. Amen. Look at Becca's face. This young lady, it's a miracle that this young lady is the way she is right now. Amen. But I've noticed since she was a baby and the change I see in you, how you've just grown and grown and grown. You had, you had a hard time with your mom and dad. You had a father who passed away while you were young. You had siblings who all gave up on serving Yahweh when you were young. Some still have. Thank God for Sister Arlene. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank Yahweh for that. You know, it's a blessing when people do right. Oh, yes. yes. And you know that doing right is good yes. because it makes things easier on you right. to Amen. do right. Amen. You can't always depend on people to do right. No. But you know it's good because when they do the right thing, it, it, it supports you. Yes, Lord. Amen. 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 You got another sister. She's, she wants to be in here. She wants to be in here. But there's a big tug from the world. Yes. There's a big tub, tug from habit. Yes. Right. That's why I thank Yahweh that I came in here at, at the age of 20. And with Yahweh's help, I never actually Amen. like backslid, backslid. Amen. Because I already had 20 years worth of devilhood in me. <laughs> and I, I know you backslide. It's, it's not easy coming back. Amen. You build up the foolish courage to, to say something ugly about the church and and uh, fly off the handle and maybe cuss out one of the preachers or do something ugly and then you're out and then you just that's 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 a hard pill to swallow to to come back from something like that we've all had these cuss words in our minds we've we've all had these slanderous statements about god and the church in our mind and about how things are here and how it doesn't take all of this but thank god the miracle Yes, Lord. That, that the, the spirit of Yahweh helped slow us down enough to where we're like, no, no, I'm not going that route. I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. But we do have people that have given up, backslid, and they're, they're, there's part of them, they want to get back. They want to get back. Hallelujah. Amen. You got a brother out there who's still, he'll t he preached the gospel. He preaches the gospel. You need to go to that church. Yeah. But it doesn't come himself. Amen. That's, right. yeah. That's all teachable. Amen. Becca, you can look at your family and Yahweh has blessed you with examples Amen. of what not to do. Amen. And we come, we come to church. We come to church. Every service. And we're affected. Amen. This little old church Amen. filled with these people that all sound kind of country. Amen. Either I'm rubbing off on y'all or y'all have always sounded country. Because I went back and started listening to all of our, our services. I'm like, oh, Angelus Davis does sound like a redneck just like me. <laughs> and then definitely Evangelist uh, Childers, uh, the way him and his brother say far and... <laughs> Yeah, it, all of us. I just began to realize I don't have to feel so bad about myself. I'm, I'm in good company. Y'all all sound country. It made me feel better. <laughs> but I think I might be the king of country. <laughs> but it's a miracle but that we're affected like this. Right. Amen. I mean, you're blessed to have been born in this way. Amen. Right? Oh, yeah. Ezekiel? Amen. Blessed to be born in this way. Yeah. <laughs> what, are the, what are the odds? That I would make it here. That you would be born in this way. You look everywhere else and they're all making excuses for their behaviors. This is the only place that I've ever been to. Where excuses for your sinful behaviors are not being made. In fact, people are examining themselves so hard in this place. Even the leaders... Even the, even the greatest person is in leadership right now, Apostle Washington, Amen. even he examines himself. Yeah. Yes. And even though he's 60 years old, yeah. he's not an old dog, you know, that can't be taught new tricks Amen. by the spirit. Even he works on himself every single day. Amen. 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 
We have our rough patches, but we come in here and Yahweh pulls us out. And we continue to examine ourselves, continue to work on ourselves to grow in grace. Amen. Because there's some old enemies that you've always had to fight because of what your trials and your tribulations are. It's going to be the old enemy, the same one you've always had because you've always been the same person. You're not tempted and tried with the same thing as your neighbor. And you've been the way you are all your life. Amen. Amen. Yahweh knows you and he knows what you, he's got to change in you Amen. in order for you to be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. So we come in here, even though our flesh Amen. wants to relax. Yes, Lord. <laughs> a lot of y'all are affected by numbers. You see how there's not a lot of people in here, so y'all aren't hardly praising Yahweh at all right now? Amen. Y'all don't know how affected y'all are by your outside stimulus. Yes. Everybody in here is being quiet tonight because there's a lot of empty chairs. Amen. And you know what? The Spirit's sick of it. Amen. When you just can't put two and two together. You just can't put two and two together. What have I always told you? If half of the church is missing, you've got to be twice as loud. Amen. Or else there's not going to be enough praise. Amen. <laughs> I'm laughing to keep myself from crying. Amen. Because it's not just us telling you what to do and then getting all wore out, tired of having to do it. It's about your salvation. Amen. And you got to believe. I mean, believe it or not, but I, I really hope you would. Amen. That we're not doing this because of this extra fat paycheck we're getting. Because no. 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 we're not getting one. It doesn't exist at all. I'm not doing this, y'all, because y'all come over and mow my yard for me. Because no. 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 you don't. No. I'm not doing this because you pay my rent. Because you don't. Right? And there's not one preacher in this church that is in that condition. Except for the one who gave up his whole entire job. To go encourage people. And there's Bible for that. Amen. We're not... We're not extortionists. We're not. I mean, I'm not. I'm not preaching this just because I'm mad at you. No. Amen. Amen. Do I look mad at you? No. No. I'm not. No. Amen. Is it? Is it? Am I red? I go for walks every day. Amen. Yes, sir. You just blame that on, on genetic mutations. Amen. But let's go to Haggai chapter 2. It's a miracle, saints. Amen. It's a miracle. It's, the, it's, the, it's the, the, the grace of God unto salvation. Hallelujah. It's the power of God. The gospel. It says the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. How in the world can you get people who don't want to do this to do this? Amen. And yet here we are doing this. But what I'm talking about is the, the not wanting to do it is a constant underlying thing. Yes. Amen? Amen. Amen. And yet at the same time, the gospel, what it does, the plan of salvation. Amen. What it does is it changes you. It strengthens you. Even though we have a constant problem, which is the sinful flesh. It's a perfect scientific experiment. It's, it's like a gauge. It's a thermostat. The thermostat is going to tell you what temperature you are. That flesh is going to tell you whether you love God or not. Because it's a constant... Press in the opposite direction. Yes, yes. Yes, and if you don't love God, you will not fulfill his, his will. Amen. 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 
And so you know because of the flesh whether you love Yahweh or not. If you're doing opposite than the flesh, you know you still love Yahweh. And it's right there for you. And you can thank Yahweh for it. Instead of getting sick and tired of this life. Amen. 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 <laughs> and uh, we need to be seeking counsel. We need to be communicating. Yes, Lord. It's important that we, we, we stay on our post. Yes, you know, I, I often tell people, you know, I call Apostle Washington quite a bit. You know, I, at least every other day. Amen. Every now and then it might be two days, and, you know. But I call him because I know he's super duper 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 busy. Yeah. I just if I live a life to where I'm showing fruit that I'm on one accord with him, Amen. then he Amen. won't have to trouble himself to want to talk That's to me right. every single day. Right. And I am giving him a little bit of relief yes. by not calling him every single yes. day. Right. That's my mindset. But if I'm not going to walk upright, if I'm not going to examine myself, work on myself and bring forth good fruit, then it's going to be a trouble to him. And if he doesn't hear from me enough, it's going to be even more troubling. But I communicate with him because there's a blessing in it. I call him up so that I can hear what's on his mind. And I can report to him what's on my mind. So that we can see if we're, our minds are on the same thing. Amen. Or Amen. see if I mentioned something that he was talking to Yahweh about. Or yes. he mentioned yes. something that I was talking to Yahweh about. Hallelujah. Or maybe he said something that I haven't been thinking about and I needed to think about it. Yes. And vice versa. Hallelujah. That's why we communicate with one another. Amen. That's why every praise Yahweh, yes. every greeting... And this whole entire place matters. Amen. We can't start just walking past people all the time. I walk by, I walk right past y'all sometime. But I always, I always stop sometime to praise Yahweh with you. I'm not going to give myself a heart attack trying to shake every single person's hand before I get out of here every single time. That's not what it's all about. But if I'm walking past Brother Chris... Because Yahweh is allowing me to have a root of bitterness in my heart towards him. You know when you're doing it out of malice. Purposefully. Amen. There are those of us that click. There are those of us who don't have a lot in common. If you never stop and praise Yahweh with the one you don't have a lot in common with, you never will. You never will make a connection with that person. Amen. And, and sometimes the devil messes with you and says, they think you're fake yeah. or they don't believe in you. Right. Yeah. And the yeah. devil will trick you not to go praise Yahweh with that person because you're trying to read their face. Yeah. 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 So true. Now, whether their face is telling the truth or not, I have a question for you. Yeah. Does it matter? No. Because you've got to learn. What do you think Apostle Washington's going to do when he goes to Mexico City or ministers anywhere else in the world? Gauge their face and say, I don't think he likes me. Let me not praise Yahweh. With no. no. Can't say so. Gauge their face and say, oh, they don't look like they want to hear the gospel. I'm, no. I'm not going to preach it. No. I think they have an evil spirit. Let me get on out of here. No. We got to learn how to not be afraid of anybody's faces. Not even saints. Just get into this place. Get into this place where Yahweh, this mindset that Yahweh wants you to be in. To where you are the peacemaker. You are the spirit of Yahweh bringer. You are the one who can cast down satanic strongholds. Any dominion or principality he may have in any area, you're able to tear it down. It may not take one time. You're never going to give up. You're going to come on in and no matter how many uh, frowns you see, no matter how many times it looks like people don't like you or don't or don't want to hear the gospel. You even have to examine yourself and see if you're playing a role in that. But you also have to be open to this. Not everybody loves the things that are of God. And if you're full of those things, then it's a high chance. 
that most of the time, yeah. sinners are going to hate to see you coming. Yeah. The only time they're glad to see you coming is if they're at the bottom, at the end of their rope, or if they're, you know, face down on the floor, and they're desperate. And they're hoping that maybe you can help them out in their life. Or Yahweh showed them a glimpse of the spirit that has the solution in you. Amen. And then they desperately, you know, communicate with you. Yeah, you're the only one who showed them kindness all this time. And, 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 and they, they can't shake that. That's why love is so powerful. But I, I, I communicated with Apostle Washington today and. And uh, he he told me something that was on his heart. Amen. Amen. And uh, and see, I thank Yahweh for these kind of opportunities. He's, he said, I don't feel like Arlington and Lubbock are visiting each other enough. Amen. Now, according to the flesh, nobody cares. I don't know about you, but according to my flesh, that just means more money, more effort, and more inconvenience. That's what my flesh, look, flesh is flesh. That's what my flesh instantly conjures up. See, but you know, I've always been that way. But let me tell you another something. If you will, now look. We all are what we are. Now, if you've obeyed the spirit, you just have. Right. And you're going to have to bear witness of that fact and testify of it. Amen. I'm a man who concentrates himself. Amen. Not always. Right. I'm a man who gives myself over to the spirit and examines myself. Yeah. I'm not fasting every day all the time. Right. But, but I do. Yeah. And I've been doing this. How long we been doing this, Prophet? Twenty five, getting up there around twenty five years. Yeah. We've been doing this. Yeah. Now, if there's no improvement, right. if there's no increase, yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. if you yes. can't see yes, Yahweh. how you recover your spirit right. faster, Amen. whenever you hear things that your flesh doesn't want to hear. Amen. Right. So now I'm looking at it with a new set of eyes. There, uh, earlier this week, I have uh, two. M I have MRIs scheduled for my shoulders and my back. Right? Okay. So uh, left shoulder, right shoulder, lower back. I get a call from the MRI people. And they want to tell me, that's 900 something dollars. Right? And uh, the least you can pay is 240 something. And the appointment's tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> and I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to make myself out to be more than I am. Risa is my witness. I'll come up here and preach about how things don't bother me. But Risa is the one who sees when things do bother me more than anybody else because she's standing right there. You know, the people who are closest to you know the most about you. I'm not going to lie that things don't ever come up and they don't fluster me. And they don't bother me sometimes. And then whenever you're trying to come up with a solution, you talk it out. But, but if, if it's bothering you, you can tell by your tone of voice that you're grasping, trying to find what you're supposed to do. Well, I was talking on the phone. It used to happen to me a lot at AT&T because that job was frustrating. But, but on, on this MRI thing, I told the lady, I said, the appointment is tomorrow. And I could feel myself getting ready to give her a full piece of my mind. <laughs> full of all the questions. Full of the what am I going to do and yeah. all flavored with this isn't fair. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> and that's evil. Yeah. That's Amen. not what we're being called Amen. to. Amen. No, no, no. Don't get me wrong. It's not a sin. 
Right. It's not a sin to be in distress. Right. It's not a sin to feel perplexed. No. Amen. It's not a sin to say, what am I going to do? Right. No. Amen. It's what takes place yeah. right, oh, yeah. right yeah. after that. Yeah. You know, whenever you're yeah. either going to treat other people like the, yeah. the Messiah Yeshua would, yeah. or you're just going to not. That's, right. that's the point. That's it's right. how you treat other people. Yeah, even the person on the phone. Oh, yeah. Even right. all of that. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So I had to stop. Uh, and I just like, didn't I just. Yahweh puts you in those situations where you just don't have the answer. He puts you in that situation on purpose so that you can get stronger. And I've been praying more. I've been meditating more. I've been listening to the Bible more, studying the scriptures more, concentrating more. What's all that for? Times like that. This. So I caught myself. Faster than I ever have before. If you can't feel yourself catching yourself faster than you did before. What does it mean you're getting? Weaker. But if you feel yourself catching yourself faster than you did before. What are you getting? Stronger. This is apostolic science. Amen. This is some amazing stuff, y'all. Rewind the tape. Listen to it later. I, I'm excited. This is what it takes to make me want to stay in church. Improvement. Growth. Results. I, I have to see them. And if I don't see them, they're there. I'm just not seeing them. And if, if, if they're there, but you can't see them, what does that make you? It's real simple. If, if something's there, but you can't see it, blind. blind. <laughs> if it's right there and you can't see it, you're blind. And how are you blind? You have, don't have understanding. That's right. That's right. You don't know what holiness is about. Yeah. If the result you really are supposed to be seeing is right there, but you can't see it. You're blind to it right now. And Yahweh's trying to work a better miracle than natural blindness healed. He's trying to cure your spiritual, your mental blindness to where exactly what his plan of salvation is trying to work in you is being worked and it's right in front of you. But you don't understand what holiness is, so you don't think you're seeing holiness. But it's right there. Hallelujah. To be able to slow down when you're yeah. upset. Yeah. Don't say and do a bunch of stuff right. out of desperation. Yeah. Yes, sir. Have faith. Yeah. Say, Yahweh's going to work it out. And then come to the conclusion, I might just have to cancel the appointment. Right. Right. That has to be an option. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But whenever you have things building up on you like pain. Yeah. And you want it to be fixed. Right. Well, what about all those people who go into surgery being promised the pain is going to be gone and they come out with more pain than before? Right. 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 You've got to factor all of that in. Yes. That the doctor is not your God, just like the Egyptians with their chariots were not the answer for, for Israel. If it's Yahweh's will... I'll get this MRI. Yes. They'll find a problem and they might have to have surgery and it will get fixed and I won't have worse pain than before. Right. That's what could happen yes. if yes. Yahweh is, if, he, if it's his will. Yes. And it doesn't make you a bad person if you go in and get surgery and you come out and it's worse. Yes. Yes. You just have to have the mind and say, must have been Yahweh's will. Yeah. Evidently, Amen. Yahweh wants me to have more pain Amen. for me to be more perfect. Yes. Yes. It's all about perspe perspective, yes. Yes. perception, yes. about having a positive attitude, yes. never doubting, yes. always believing, yes. never staying upset when Yahweh doesn't want you to stay upset about something. Yes. 
staying upset about something if Yahweh wants you to have a fiery spirit about something. That's why I don't understand all of y'all who can't praise Yahweh in the sanctuary. Yahweh says, I want you to be on fire about this. And you're like, eh, I'm on fire. Leave me alone. No, you're not. You're not on fire. Amen. But let's read and see what Haggai says. Yes. I got one. Please. I got one and one for it is written. Yes, sir. In the second year of Darius the king. Uh-huh. In the sixth month. Yes. In the first day of the month. Read. Came the word of Yahweh by Haggai. So the word of Yahweh came by Haggai. That means it's important. Amen. Amen. Every time you read in the Old Testament it says Yahweh spoke. Yes. It's important. Yes. Amen. That's obvious, but not to people. When they read this Bible just, and they're desensitized by it. Yeah. But they don't get anything out of it. Yeah. So you got to say, the word of Yahweh came by Haggai? Amen. It must be important. Right. Yeah. I may not fully understand what all it's talking about, but I know it's important. Yeah. Read, what does it say? Came the word by Haggai. Yes. The prophet of Zerubbabel. Yes. The son of Shealtiel. To Zerubbabel. Amen. Yeah. Yes. Governor of Judah. Yes. And the son... And the, and, the, and to Joshua, the son of Joseph. And to Joshua, the son of Joseph. The high priest. The high priest. Thus says, just speak, thus speaks Yahweh. An Moses. important God Amen. saying something to an important person, a prophet of Yahweh, yeah. to Amen. two important people, yeah. and to all the children of Israel. Yeah. The, the most important people on the yeah. planet. Yeah. That's right. The church. Yeah. What we speak is important. Amen. It matters. We're not up here playing around. Amen. Everything from this place is important. You've got to apply it to your life and quit rejecting it all the time. The reason why you stay in the same and stay in your old way that you were disgusted with yourself as is, why you want to stay the way you are, you're torn in two about it. One second you want to change and you're tired of who you are. Next second you're convinced by the devil that you're all right the way you are. Amen. That's how Satan likes it. And he wants to leave it that way. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sad and depressed. Yeah. Do you want to get rid of that? Yeah. I had to come to the point where I wanted to get rid of that. Yeah. I was very depressed, very sad. I'm not going to compare mine with yours. Amen. I don't play that game. <laughs> And the next thing you know, we're going to ask who's had the harder life. Yeah. And then you're going to ask whose race has the hardest race. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to turn into some reason why I think my life is worse than yours. Yeah. Yeah. And everybody, if they try hard enough, will try to win that game. Yeah. Nobody wins. No. <laughs> Nobody wins because the hardest things I've ever gone through yeah. are the things that I've gone through. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. I can't compare them to what you've gone through because I've never been you. And I didn't know how it made you feel to go through what you've gone through because how you feel about it is a mirror of your life perspective. Amen. So everybody's life is separate. And Yahweh deals with us all on a one on one basis. So we just need to have compassion for one another and have an understanding heart for one another and quit trying to figure everybody out. Just our own selves, just our own souls, just our own salvation. Work it out for yourself. Don't worry about anybody else. Amen. But what does it say? Thus speaks Yahweh of hosts, Uh huh. saying this people say. This people. The time has not come. This people says. Amen. This says it's not time. Amen. It's never time to do what Yahweh has shown the apostles. It's never time. It was ne it was, it's never been time for my flesh when I hear Apostle Washington or anybody else say, let's do a love offering tonight. Let's make a sacrifice. Let's do more. It's never time. It's never time. Do you remember what I said? The two kind of miracles, financial that Yahweh works in your life? Amen. The first one is the most important. When you love Yahweh enough yeah. to do right with your own finances. Amen. Where you grow up and stop being a child yeah. and yeah. stop making bad decisions all yeah. the time. Yeah. That is a miracle. Yeah. Amen. Because 
you're born in sin, shaped in iniquity, and you really don't care about this thing. It's only the power of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, that has enabled you to care about this thing. You're not better than anybody else that's out there. I don't count myself to be better than anybody else in this planet. I don't even really understand it. Somehow, some way, I'm here and they're not. Amen. I understand their reasons for why they don't want to be in here. I understand the reasons for why someone would want to be in here. I see both. But why did I choose the good one? Why am I still in here after I sit down, after I'm done preaching, I'm going to sit down and listen to another preacher. They're going to say stuff I don't want to hear. It happens every single time. Every single time I come to church, I hear things I don't want to hear. Why? Because I'm still alive and I'm still being made perfect. Amen. Somebody's going to call me to a sacrifice that I'm not ready to make. <laughs> so when he said, we need to do more traveling. And, I didn't, I, and, and then your mind will lock down. Yeah. And you won't even see things sometimes. Yeah. But you know what? Because of what I learned last week about the MRI, my spirit instantly recovered. Yeah. And when I say instantly, fast enough to where nobody noticed that it bothered me. Right. That's what I mean by it. That's instant enough. You can't show any signs of weakness in front of some people. You have to find a sense of urgency to recover yourself. Yes. Other people that may be of an understanding heart, you may be able to show a little frustration and then pull yourself back together. Right. But you can never be satisfied with that. Right. we got to learn how to get to the point where we don't show people that we don't want to do Yahweh's will. Because it's, it's never good to be against the Spirit or to show that you don't want to do it. Because your neighbor can see your weakness and they'll see, oh look, they don't want to do it either. I quit. Just by your five seconds of frustration, they gave up and you recovered yourself. Amen. But, I, but thanks be to God, by his grace and, and with his help and power, I recovered myself. I said, amen. You know, that's right. Because I was just reading in Haggai, Apostle Washington. I said, they, what did they say? It's not time. The time has not come. The time has not come. The time that Yahweh's house. The should time be built. that Yahweh's house should be built. Amen. Read. Then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai. You know Yahweh's got something to say after you're gonna make some kind of bold, foolish proclamation like that. Yeah. And how often do we say things like that against yeah. the Spirit under yeah. our breath, in our hearts, in our minds? Yeah. Amen. Sometimes we come in and hear the word, and the way the preacher's preaching, we're like, mm -mm, "Not again! I'm stuck in here again. I don't want to hear all of this." And then. After we sit in there, we pull ourselves together and say, I can't be thinking like this in Yahweh's house. I can't be, I can't be doing this. I've done this. I backslid in my heart. I, I backslid some of us out the building. It took me a year to come back. I can't be thinking like this. You get in an argument late at night with your husband or your wife or a brother or a sister or something. Yeah. Something troubling happens to you. Yeah. You're, you're disturbed. You're at a crossroads. Yeah. The next day, you're fighting devils you haven't fought for a long time. Yeah. You got to fight all day. You got to get to the church. And then the word's going to go forth. And it's not going to take it easy on you. The word says, I got to clean up everything you messed up last Amen. night. The spirit, the spirit, there's nothing the spirit can't handle. The spirit takes notes. It doesn't even have to take notes. It is a note. It sees everything that was said and doesn't lose track of any of it. And he says, and the spirit has everything prioritized. I'm going to handle this, 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 and so on and so on in your life. And he never loses track and never gets confused and never feels overwhelmed. He knows what he's going to do in 2028 with you if Yahweh's will that 2028 ever comes. He knows every single thing that will happen to you that whole entire year that's going to perfect you. Amen. Amen. Your mind might blow up if you try to think about it. You might backslide. Amen. <laughs> so he said, this people says the time's not come. Then came the word of Yahweh by Haggai the prophet saying, it's a time for you. But is it? But hold on now. Is it time for you, Amen. oh ye? To dwell in your parents' house. Ye means all of you. Yes. Y-E means all of you. Amen. In fact, 
even ye and you, anytime there's a Y on front of it, it's plural. All of you. Amen. Thine and thou and thee is all singular. Amen. So, so what you got to understand is that all of you that are all in agreement, that you don't want to spend any more money doing anything for other people. Not today. <laughs> that, that commercial, no, 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 not in my house. <laughs> Block and trying to block the basket. You're always trying to slam. Amen. Not today. Not in my house. This is not your house. But let's say something about your house. Amen. Is it time for you? Oh, ye. All of you. All of you. Amen. Amen. All of us being flesh, we all agree. Yes. Unless you want to look, if, unless you're trying to make yourself look better than your neighbor, then you'll just agree with the spirit just to look better than your neighbor. Amen. Some of us just agree with the spirit just because we like disagreeing with the people next to us because we don't like the people next to us. You can do the right thing for the wrong reason and, and come off deceived by Satan that you're a good old holy person. I've done a lot of right and good things in this place and still had something wrong with me on the side too. Spirit had to fix me. Had to, had to clean the whole foundation off and rebuild. Amen. Let, let Yahweh rebuild you because you come in here thinking you're righteous. You think your husband or your wife is wicked. You think somebody else in the church is wicked and you're convinced that they're wicked. But you won't examine yourself. You thinking that you're, they're wicked, but you're righteous, got you coming in here not examining yourself, only examining that other person. So the devil's got you right where he wants you. You're coming in here. You're coming in here with malice in your hearts towards one another. You're coming in here with envy and strife. You're coming in here with selfishness, slothfulness, a, 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 a lustful, fornicating spirit. You know, just nasty people. We can come into Yahweh's house just full of lust. But we got our minds on our neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yes, yes, but I tell you what, what almost all of us agree with, according to the flesh, is we don't feel like spending no money on anybody but ourselves. <laughs> Amen. Unless you're one of those people who likes to spend money on other people because it makes you feel saved. Right. Amen. But you're not. You'll spend your electric bill yes. giving a love offering. Yes. Because it made you look holy. Right. We can't do that. No. Yahweh is like, that doesn't make any sense. Just do, do right with your money. Right. <laughs> Help as much as you can. Yes. Let that miracle of you loving me enough to, to do your finances right. Yes. Give you enough money to where you can give a little and you don't look that amazing. Right. And you just... Give a little when you can. Do what you can. And sometimes you, Yahweh will bless you to give a lot. But you're not doing it because that's your soul happiness. Is, is giving because that's how you make up for your sins. So it says, is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses? And this house lies waste. It, houses don't get sealed without money being spent on them. So your house is all sealed up because you spent your money on your house. It was yes. time Amen. for you to fix up everything you want yes. in your life. Yes. But somehow, some way, it's not time <laughs> to do that for Yahweh's house and for the work of the ministry and for saints. Whether they be in Mexico, whether they be in uh, Mother, with Mother Connie or in, in Sinton, whether it be uh, uh, Lubbock. Yeah. Or anywhere else. Anywhere else. Yeah. Yes, just not willing. Just not willing. Yeah. Just not willing. Yeah. Just not willing. Yeah. Amen. Amen. <laughs> the funny thing is, it's like, I'm trying to get healthy again. I know what I need to eat to be healthy. But I go home and eat all the stuff I shouldn't eat. Yeah. A whole bunch of junk food. Yeah. A whole bunch of sugar. And once you get the sugar in you, you just want to eat more and more and more because it's so addictive. Yeah. So I want to get me some high quality nutrient dense foods right. and discipline myself to eat those but once you eat that high quality healthy stuff you want the sugar right after <laughs> so this is a struggle for me but the funny thing was apostle washington while we're talking he says yeah we could get steaks and lobsters all we want if we didn't care about ministering to other people yeah. 
But we got to make sacrifices. That's right. It's funny because I just told my wife yesterday, I sure did like that steak you just made me. If you could get me two or three of those a week, <laughs> that'd be great. So I had to examine myself. Right. Amen. Did it mean I was evil for that? No. 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 You got to learn how to take what is said. Yeah. That's right. Don't close your eyes. Amen. Actually examine yourself and yeah. see if you're doing something wrong. Yeah. Don't let the devil play with you all the time about everything. That's why you're so depressed and you're at a standstill and you never do anything. You may not have even been doing anything wrong, but you don't know how to examine yourself. You don't know how to be honest with yourself. Chances are you are doing something wrong. What I want to do with steaks is not buy all the junk and just get the healthy stuff and it will equal out. Do you understand that concept? Amen. You don't spend all your money on everything you want. That's you right. save it up to get the healthy stuff that may cost just a little bit more. But at the exact same time, that's just a personal preference and a plan for me. I have to be willing to where if that plan fails, it just fails. And I've got to be willing to help the work of the ministry over my diet. That's what Yahweh wanted me to make sure that my mind stayed on. And that's why, and Apostle Washington didn't know anything about what, what was on my mind. It was just the spirit of Yahweh leading him to just say it. It had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with me and Yahweh. That's why I don't get mad at these preachers. Because, look, I'm not in here for anyone, including Apostle Washington. I'm not in here for any of y'all. You are, none of y'all are the reason that I am in church. Not one. I'm in here because Yahweh loves me so much. I struggle with y'all. Sometimes I'm like trying to find how you're right. And can, even from the pulpit on down. Because we all go through that. We all get tried with the, even the greatest leaders. We're like, we just cannot. I said, because you're blind. You just can't see how their judgment is right. But what do you do when you're in those situations? This is what you do. What are you trying to teach me, Yahweh? Let me get the man out of my mind and see what the spirit is trying to shape in me. And then your understanding comes open later. Yeah. Our first judgment is almost always wrong because it's how the flesh sees it. And Yahweh's trying to change your perspective. Amen. From the fleshly mind to a... He's trying to put spiritual understanding in your fleshly mind. And as long as you come in here and keep on hearing the word, it will stay. If you keep on coming to every other, other, other service, you're never going to be able to maintain this thing. Because, because that's still part of salvation. Coming in here to as many services as you can make it to. And believing. And coming back, even though you know you're probably going to hear the same thing. It's, it, you have to hear the same thing because your brain's not good enough to retain it. Because the first time you heard it, you didn't understand it. So now you got to hear it again in the future where you're slightly different from your new experiences. You get a chance to hear that same truth again and you get a little more understanding, but you still don't fully understand it. So you know you got to hear it again. Instead of getting sick and tired about having to hear the same old, same old, same old over and again, you start to take joy and you realize that Yahweh loves you enough to bless you to hear the same old thing again. And you begin to realize, ain't nothing wrong with Apostle Washington's judgment. There's nothing wrong with Apostle Hurley's judgment. Nothing wrong with Prophet Stanford's judgment. Evangelist Davis' judgment. Our judge, Evangelist Children, our judgment's not off. We're not all that. We haven't attained everything. But I guarantee you, we've been concentrating and giving ourselves over to Yahweh. We have been doing this. And it's, it, it bears fruit. Amen. 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 I'm saying we are people that are in tune with the Spirit. Hallelujah. Amen. Yes, Lord. Amen. 
Apostle Paul had to talk like this. Yeah. You would have thought he was praising himself. Right. If, you, if, if you don't read your Bible, you think I'm praising myself right now. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You would Amen. think that. Amen. When we tell you what we do, right. when the Apostle Paul said, be ye there for followers of me, yes. you'd say, who do you think you are telling a person to follow you? But if you read your Bible, you realize he says, we have wronged no man. Oh, you think you're all that? You haven't wronged no man? We're in a difficult position coming up here telling you that we've been obeying Yahweh. We've been doing what we're supposed to do. And therefore, he's blessed us with a sober mind to be able to help y'all out. in the kind of decisions and choices that you all need to make. You're at a decision. You're at a crossroads of whether you're going to think we're full of ourselves. We're puffed up with pride. Right. Amen. Amen. They just want us to worship them. They just want us, they just want us to make them look good. That's, the, that's a last ditch effort of Satan to try to keep you the way you are. Because all you do, you, all you got to do is just rebuke that. And then, you, and then you obey. And then your life works out. And then you're like, I beat, I beat the devil. You know how good you feel when you beat the game? When you finally beat that devil and, 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 and it worked out just like uh, the church said it would. Amen. You'll get the Holy Ghost if you just do it exactly the way you were told to, Brother Chris. Amen. And you'll beat that game. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Yes. That's right. Amen. But what does it say? Now, therefore, thus says Yahweh of hosts, uh -huh. consider your ways. You have so much and bring in little. Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your sealed houses and this house lies waste? Lie waste? Amen. So traveling, right. we got saints in Lubbock. Yeah. We got saints in Arlington that are weak yeah. from lack of fellowship. Amen. Amen. Other than that, there would be no need to drive. Right. But we're living in the last and evil days yeah. where the time is so evil yeah. that unless you shake things up, yeah. we're going to get stagnant. Amen. Amen. We come in here three times a week, and yeah. in, in, in the, to the flesh, it doesn't take long for it to feel like a ritual. Right. Amen. 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 Here I am again, ho-hum. <laughs> I mean, you can pray, you can read your Bible all day, and that still doesn't stop the devil from coming to you Amen. and say, aren't you tired? Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. Ugh. Yeah. Amen. The tired of the Bible. Tired of listening to Christian music. I'm tired of looking at these people's mugs. I'm tired of having to help people when I want to go home and go to sleep. Don't they know that if I could get more sleep, I'd be in a better mood? I can't tell you how many times that thought is running across my mind in this way. I was telling, I think I was telling Brother Blake, somebody, I was saying, I said, when I first came to church, it seemed like everybody moved once a week. And then whenever we got there, they wouldn't pack their boxes right. And so they wouldn't be taped on the bottom. And whoever picked up the box but didn't notice and breaks their stuff, now everybody's mad at you. But you're helping them move. Yeah. That's the kind of stuff you go through in the church. Because the Spirit is going to say to you, Put your hand underneath the box. In other words, learn. That's why I put you in this situation. That's why my spirit, my angel made that person not tape that box. So you could pick it up. And it could break their most valuable possessions. You could look like somebody who doesn't know how to do things right. And they will treat you that way for six months to a year. Because they don't know how to let things go. Because they're not completely perfect yet. And you have to forgive them. And they may give you some ugly looks. And you have to accept that. You can't leave church. you got to stay in church and wait till uh, you are the only one that you really have to get right. Only you have to get right. Nobody else has to get right. Nobody has to forgive you. Nobody has to be nice to you. Nobody has to invite you over to, your, to their house. How many people have backslid? Nobody invites me. I'm, I'm listening to people. Nobody, please. 
white people songs. Nobody plays Spanish people songs. I'm like, if you want to backslide and go to hell for such a stupid reason, why don't you just don't, please? I had to repent. Don't be that way to people. Because we get tired of people's foolishness. And you want to get all, I'm just being frank. I'm just, it's time for bluntness. You've heard of tough love. And we want to get on to people and we want to say stuff rough and tough. And then those of us that are like that, the spirit is like, too sharp. Tongue too sharp. Learn how to not be this way. Learn how to be kinder and gentler. So it, everything we go through in the church is shaping us and making us perfect. <laughs> Whether you ruin your car because you don't change the transmission or you borrowed it and then ruined their car. I did that with Brother Carl. Yeah. I had my, my Aunt Kathy's, I don't know how many number what husband of hers because she got, was married so many times had a, a, a Dodge Dynasty, and they, like, gave it to me. But then they got a divorce. He came back, said he wanted it from me, and I wouldn't give it to him. You know, things like that, you have to live with that. Because you're so wrapped up in material possessions that you, that you won't give. Somebody gave it to you for free, and then they are down and out, and they need their car back. And you won't give it to him? That's what I did. My conscience smote me for years because of that. And made it harder for me to stay in church. Everything you do wrong makes it hard for you to stay in church. Elder Childers had a colostomy bag. He was sick. He was dying daily. Physically. He needed help with somebody to work on his truck. And I stayed home and watched Heroes. I'll never forget it. That I was so carnal and so fleshly that I would rather stay home and watch my show because I didn't have a DVR than help the man that was dying that I just wish I could do something for right now. Hallelujah. When we don't do what we're supposed to do, it's going to stay with you. That's right. I think, I think Desi called me up in the middle of the night and asked for some help one time. And I said, can you ask brother so-and-so? Yeah. Because sometimes we all have our weak spots right. when you're really sleepy and you don't think, you can't think straight when somebody wakes you up. Yeah. But then you said to yourself, maybe if I had a little more fire, right. I would wake up. Yeah. Maybe if life, if, maybe if doing what Yahweh wants me to do and told me to do over the pulpit was Amen. important enough, yeah. perhaps yeah. I would wake up enough to do what's right to do. Amen. 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 So I call up Pastor Bibbs after I talk to Apostle Washington. And, and, and Pastor Bibbs is not well as he's feeling. He's still, he's still, Yahweh blessed him to speak something to me. That even just that I didn't even think of. I mean, we're going to take turns. Yeah. Lubbock's going to come here. Yeah. Arlington's going to go there. Yeah. But you know, that's not a guarantee either. Right. So you need to realize that it's true. It's true. What you need to do is everything needs to be a reason why you should believe. Right. You've got to get to that point where everything in life that you experience is a reason to believe. And that may sound like I'm crazy. <laughs> like I'm brainwashed. One time I was sitting in the front row and uh, Apostle Washington said, you got to stop thinking. You remember that day? And my cult, 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 cult alarm went off. And I said, how many years have I been in this church and just realized this is a cult? Couple of years. You gonna wait till I get married and say that? Your problem is that you think. I thought we were supposed to. I thought that was the reason why I'm here, because I heard the gospel and I thought about it. No, it's like you can think wrong. And if you find yourself exactly if you find yourself thinking wrong, the spirit says, Don't think. 
That's why I often preach and say, you just, look, you don't even have to try to think. They're coming to your head and you can either accept them or reject them. You don't have to go back over every thought because you're going to wear yourself out over, over thoughts that you've already come to a conclusion about. You don't need to go back over it. So I know sometimes we sound crazy. Right. <laughs> Stop thinking about whether you should stand up and clap your hands and say hallelujah. Amen. Get up and do it. Amen. You're overthinking this. Yeah. Yeah. My yeah. time is, is past gone. I thank Yahweh for the words. Let's, let's go ahead and just, just realize that we... We're going to do more and more and more and more and more and more. And Yahweh is the merciful one. He knows when we've done enough. Let's leave that up to him, not us. Amen. So at this time, we're going to move further on in the service and receive our beloved Pastor Jenkins by saying, praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Hallelujah. Is Yahweh good? Hallelujah. Yes, Praise, Yahweh. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, saints. Praise Yahweh. Y'all may be seated. Yeah. That's how some of us feel when we walk into the house. The Yahweh. Like, uh, not again. But we come anyway. Amen. Praise Yahweh, saints. Praise Yahweh again. We want to thank Yahweh for words that was spoken by Apostle Washington. I mean, sorry, Apostle Hurley. I was, I was going back and forth, going back and forth between Lubbock and uh, here. <laughs> but thank Yahweh for those spoken from our beloved Apostle Hurley. They know they were words were right on time. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. The verse I want to give the most high honor to my father Yahweh in the Son's name, Yahshua the Messiah. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving double honor to the men of God that we have here and in Lubbock. Yes. To our, our women supervisors and brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen. I want to send greetings Amen. to Mother Connie in Lubbock. Yes, Hold on. Mother Yahweh. <laughs> and sent him. And sent him. Mother, Mother Connie, I just prophesied for you. <laughs> but send mother, uh, greetings to Mother Connie and sent down in Santa. Amen. And want to thank Yahweh for blessing me to see this day that was not promised to me. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Um, just want to thank Yahweh for blessing me with the family that I have, my wife, yes. my children, Amen. my grandchild. Amen. And she, uh, she, they are truly a blessing unto me. Amen. 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 Just want to thank Yahweh for I was, uh, my wife. I was just looking at her these last couple of days, Amen. and um, Amen. she, I was looking at. You know, she's, she's a. I can say about her, she's one of the good things I can say about her. She's a very hard worker. Yes. Amen. And, uh, Amen. and I thank Yahweh for that. How she tries to help everybody. Amen. Right. Amen. I was, sometimes I say, "Hey," I say, "Hey." hey. <laughs> Don't answer that phone. <laughs> you at work? No. You know, if you were at work in the office, would you answer your phone? Oh, yeah. you, you at work right now? They'll call back, yeah. or you can call them back when you take a break. Right. I said, yeah. but don't feel like you have to answer it right yeah. then and there, right. because you're working. Yeah. Now I'm not telling her don't answer y'all phone calls because you know she don't need to help y'all, but she. So, she, she needs to, I just want to make sure that she don't try to always try to do everything all at once. Yeah. Try to just know how to do one, to finish one thing, then go to, go to the other. So she be putting all that stress on her. Amen. I'm not saying y'all put stress on her. She put stress on herself. Yeah. So, so, you know, so don't, you, don't read nothing into what uh, that's not, that I'm not saying. Amen. You know, like some, we all, some of us, all we think we can read between the lines. So don't try to read between the lines. Saying I'm saying, don't call my wife. I'm not saying. That. Amen. But and, that, and, that, and that's one of the ways. That's how Satan uh, messes with us. Yeah, he plays. We plays those mind games with us. See, he he's very good at that. Way better than you are. 
And sometimes yes. in the world, we always think we we good at playing mind games on other people. No, you're not. You're a novice. You don't know how to say that. Satan is the master of that. Yeah. Matter of fact, he got you thinking that you're good at it. Yeah. That's how good he is. Yeah. You know, in the world, we say he just used a Jedi mind trick on you. Man. But but that's how Satan works. And and I think Yahweh, being in here, we learn how to recognize Satan when he's at work. You know, he come he, he he comes in different form, comes come to us in different forms, in different ways. You know, try he always try to come at us when when we when he when we're at our weakest and when we're not paying attention. He come to us with the little things that that he think that can destroy us. And if we let him, they will destroy us. Amen. Amen. That's why I always think I thank y'all wait for the example and the teachings of Apostle Washington, how he has shown us over the years, through his through his words, and by the way he walks, how to how he recognizes Satan when yeah. Satan comes, yeah. Amen. 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 And he showed us how to do that through our marriages because yeah. we know we know Satan comes to us in our marriage. I know I was sharing with my wife the other day. I was telling her I said, you know, we we've been here for twenty something years. And, you know, over the years we've, you know, because when we first got here, our marriage was, was broken. Right. Amen. We was just, you know, going through the motions. Yeah. You know, no doubt that I can, I can only speak for myself and she can testify of herself, but I, no doubt I was just waiting for the opportunity to leave. Amen. Right. Yeah. Not, you know, just like I was waiting for the one big blow up and I'm out the door. Right. You know, it wasn't. She wasn't gonna have to tell me to hit the road, Jack. But I was my, <laughs> by the time she said hit, I'm already down the road. Uh, and no, 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 definitely wasn't where we coming back. No, that that's see, that's my mindset. Yeah, yeah. And so even when she, she, my wife came here first. Even when she was here first, that was still my mindset. I didn't right. care that she was in church. Yeah. I would say as long as say she's in church and she focused on that, that means she's staying off my back. Yeah. So she's leaving me alone. You know, and, I, and that's and that's the mindset. And then what solidified in my mind is when I came here and he's and I heard the word preached, and all I said when I left, I'm saying, why is she telling these people all about my business? Not, under, not having a clear, clear understanding that that the word was going forth, and so I was because I was still in darkness. I didn't have I didn't have a, I didn't have a complete understanding. So I left man and said, just just solid, solidified it. I'm out of here. I'm gone. Oh, yeah. But somehow, because uh, I, I did not, my plans were never ever to come back here again. Amen. Not here. And I was so, but I, but if, not thinking, I had always, you know, asked Lord my my, my adult life to lead me to the truth. Yeah. Right. You no, know, not thinking that this was the truth because all I heard was somebody talking about me. <laughs> So, so, yeah, that's right. That's, that wasn't the truth I wanted to hear. I didn't want to hear no truth about me. I want to hear the truth about other stuff. You know, open up a mystery. But, but when I, but when I, but when I, uh, but somehow I, I, I look at it like this: that Yah, Yahweh blocked my anger, or blocked my mind to how I felt before. And when I came back the second time. Just my ears were open and I heard. Yes, and at that, but I thank Yahweh that my heart was not hardened. Amen. It was still made of flesh, and yes. it got pricked, it got Good. pricked again, and Amen. then all of a sudden it got stabbed and punctured yeah. to the point where I, I knew I, this is where I had to be. Right. And I thank yes. Yahweh that uh, that I uh, my mind was made up. I said this is where I need to be. Yes. I'm still not fully understanding the decision. That I had to make, or that I was that, uh, that I was going to make, Amen. to be here. What, what came afterwards? Right. But that's why we come here. We come here to learn, learn Amen. how to be, Amen. learn how to be a, a, a husband, right. learn yeah. how to be a good father, yeah. learn, learn how to be a good person, whether inside the church or outside the church. Amen. Learn how to love one another. Right. So one of the biggest things for me, I had to unlearn, so to speak. A lot of things I, uh, that I uh, learned or, or thought about how to uh, raise my children, Amen. on how to be towards my children, on how to be towards my wife. Yes. 
You know, I had to, you know, you know the, you know the testimony, I had to teach them how to fight. Right. Instead of teaching them to fight, I had to teach them to flee. Trust me. Yeah. And I was teaching them not to fight, so I mean, I had, so I had to teach them to flee, and that was a hard thing to swallow. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. They're going to think they scary, or they sorry, or they weak. You know, cause this is my mind. This is, yeah. we got to remember, this is my mindset. Right. Not 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 looking at that's the right thing to do. What I not looking at what I was doing before then right. was wrong. Yeah. Right. You know, yeah. you know to, teaching them how to defend themselves. Because right. I said, because I was saying, don't start the fight. You know, but finish it. And if your brother in trouble, you know, help him out. Yeah. Are you coming? No, like you know, one go high, one go low. You know, if your brother and, and Brother engaged, or somebody look like they want to jump in, you come out, knock them in the back. I'm teaching them a four year old, five year old, all these things. Teaching them the weak points of the human body, where to, where to go to. That's how messed up my mind was. That's how messed up. That's how, that's how much into the world that I was. Yeah. Teaching a child. Uh, it, when that, it's, it's, it's this movie um, that came out. Whenever I see it, I think about it. It's uh, called The, um, the Account. And how he was teaching his kids early on how to how to fight, you know how to know how to fight. How the brother, like the brother, got beat up. He's sitting right back, said, "You go oh, yeah. go get him back." Oh, yeah. And I'm looking at them like, "Lord, that was me." <laughs> <laughs> and you see, you see a little kid, little teenage kid, run over there doing martial arts and techniques and kicking and hitting somebody, hitting another kid in the nose. And I'm yeah. like, I'm like, and then. Your eyes become open, oh, yeah. 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 and you see, that's what I was teaching my children, yeah. how to Amen. be like that. Right. Amen. But I thank Yahweh for the words that was taught and uh, that were preached here. I, my eyes became more and more open. Amen. 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 See, I, one thing I always knew uh, growing up, I knew what type of father I didn't want to be. Uh -huh. Amen. Um, Amen. I wanted to be a father that was prevalent in my kid's life. Right. Because I knew what it was like not to have that. Right. Yes. And so I said, I, I got I want to be be in that life. And then when I came here, I learned I learned how to be there even even more so. Because a lot of things that I learned growing up, I learned uh, from my grandfather. Yes. Amen. But my grandfather, naturally so, taught me a lot of things. My grandfather, naturally, so in my eyes, was but the best man I ever knew. Right. When the kids used, when kids was in school, and they used to say, hey, "Write, write." Uh, whenever, whenever we used to do this, yeah. they used to tell me, "Write your hero." All the other kids would always run to people in, in history like Martin Luther King, Malcolm X, or somebody like that. Right. First person I always went to was my yeah. grandfather, yeah. because that's what he was to me, yeah. all the way up to the point where he passed away. He never, he, not like, again, naturally so, he taught me a lot of things. So yeah. I, taught, taught me what type of uh, man to be, what type of father to be, because I saw how he was towards my aunts and my uncles and how much they highly respected him right. and how they, how they uh, admired him. And so, yeah. and I saw how, he, so to me, in my eyes, that's what it was, but I mean, here, I, I learned. I came here. I learned so much more yes, than Lord. that. I learned how to be yes, uh, a, a righteous, holy father to my children. Not 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 just naturally so, but spiritually so. Amen. And so I, I so I always try to take all the good things I learned from my grandfather, and, and, and still I still to this day I still implement them in my life on how to be, but also. Um, uh, Put it together with the spirit, right. with what the what, what the spirit say. My my is is weird because, to to my remembrance, I never heard my grandfather cuss. Maybe like a, maybe a handful of times I heard him cuss. Right. Never heard him cuss. Never saw him drink. Maybe a couple of times. I saw I used to, one time I walked in the refrigerator and I saw a beer in the refrigerator. I'm like, who beer is this? <laughs> and then I saw my grandfather drink the beer. I'm like, like oh, he drank the beer. That was the only time I ever saw him drink a beer. Even at family get together, he didn't he didn't right. do any drinking. Right. Yeah. So it left a, an impression yeah. on me as a child growing up. Right. And so I, I always carry that with me. I always I always carry that with me. Even some of the things that I do, I find that I do now, like I, I do it. I, uh, some of the things I used to do with my grandfather, I do it 
I try to do it with knife. Like what, how we just sit at the table and just drink or eat ice cream or eat chips. We used to sit at the, on the porch and do things like that. So I always try to implement them things in, uh, not only with the spirit, Amen. with my kids. Amen? Amen. That's, why, that's why we as fathers, we have to do, we have, we have to, we have to, you got to have to decide within yourself what type of man, what type of father type of husband you want to be. And that, that's always a question. I always, so I always uh, put to my, to my sons. I say, I say what, I, uh, even from the time they were small, I walk up to them. Not only did I talk to them about the spiritual things Amen. and what we believe in, but I talked to them about things in general, what they go through in school. Some, some, some of the natural things that they Amen. fight against yeah. at school. Yeah. You know, yeah. what they go through. Sit up, I, I get up I get up sometimes in the morning. This is like get, you have to understand. I'm talking about me, yeah. so don't look at me and saying, "Well, Pastor Jenkins did everything. Sister Cannon do nothing." No, it's not. I'm not talking like that because <laughs> she did. I can't even. I don't even have enough time to testify all the things. You know, talking about the father. What 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 role the father plays in that child's life? You know, you, I sit at the table. I get up. I make them breakfast. I make them something to eat. Don't be afraid of the kitchen, fathers. Get in there. Even if you only know how to make cereal. Make cereal. Sit down and eat cereal with your children. You know, I get up in the morning. I sit down. I just get up in the morning and sit down at the table with them. And sometimes Kathy wasn't even there. And I sit down and I talk to them. And we just talk. Because I want to make sure I kept that dialogue open. You know, you know, not only did I talk to them about, about Yahweh, but I talked to them about Life period. Yeah. You know, about what it, about yeah. things about being uh, a young man growing up. Yeah. You know, teaching them about, as they got older, talk to them about things only a father can do Amen. to his sons. Yeah. You know, not, not leaving everything to the mother. Right. You know, sometimes if we're not careful, we'll get things confused. Right. Where when we say, you know, we you know the, the mother's the chase keeper at home. And so you think the mother's supposed to do all the taking care of another child. Right. But the father, well, I go out and work and I bring home, I, you know, I bring home the bacon, so, and mother, she fried up in the pan. But sometimes fathers, <laughs> when it comes to your sons, when it comes to your sons, you, sometimes you come home, you fry it up in the pan sometimes. In other words, you get out there, you spend time with them, spend some quality time, go out there, go out there maybe just play catch a little bit. Amen. You know, just like, Teach them things. See, like teach them how to take care of your yard if you have an interest in something. I used to, I taught my children, my sons, how to cut the yard. No, I had to, just like my grandfather did with me. I walked behind them. Why are they pushing the lawnmower? And showed them what places they missed. Why, as, when they asked me, well, why are we going this way? I would explain it to them. But this is why you're cutting it the way you're cutting it this way. Now, everybody got a way, they, they, a different way to cut the yard. But I'm just telling this is this is the way I was taught. On how to, how to cut the yard, and then things around the house, you know, things like that. Then I take my take my sons. We go and we get in our car, and we just go riding. And you may think it's nothing, but it's more than what you think it is. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Because I, I when I sometimes when I hear my sons talk, and I hear what they say when things they say, they say, you know, I remember when we came over here, we did this, we did that. I said all we did was ride in the car. They said, but. They, those are things that they remember. Right. Yeah. And they remember they, they, they said they, they, have, they have fun. I'm like, you yeah, have fun. Yeah. But it's not that. It was the, the time we spent together. Yeah. You know, it, it was the bond. It was the bonding yeah. time. Yeah. I said, fathers, you can't be afraid right. to have bonding time with your son. Right. Don't, leave it up, don't leave it up to the wife. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, those of you who have daughters that don't have sons, spend a like I tell Dave Young. I say you give. I say you put Naya in the car. Y'all just go ride. I say you 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 go do stuff with her, Amen. and you spend time with her. Right. I mean, I mean, I want you to be right now. I'm, I want a Davion Junior, but right now I want you to be the best girl dad <laughs> yeah. to ever walk. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Now my wife, she did. She she spent time with them too. But I'm talking about the, what 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 it is to be a father yeah. to your children. 
Amen. See, I'm speaking on the son behalf because I don't have Amen. any daughters. Amen. But you do this even more so with your children, if you got your children, period, with sons or daughters. Because they remember these times. I mean, yeah, probably. Me and daddy, we're going to have uh, father-daughter day again, and I'm going to have some pizza, and he's going to give me some chocolate, and yeah. we're going to have a drink. And she remembered yeah. from mm -hmm. the time that he took her to yeah. spend that type of quality, because it means a lot to her. Yeah, that's right, amen. And she's going she to remember that for the rest of our life, but it can't be no one-off. Yeah. You can't be, you know, you got to keep keep doing it. You keep, keep, like I said, again, father, don't be afraid to... I mean, get in there if you get if you know you're not a good cook, get in there, burn up something. That's the only way you're gonna learn. You know the, yeah, yeah, exactly. I did all of that. I, I gave him, I gave him, I just give him baths. You know, one time I made a mistake, left him in there, and I kept hearing. I know I said I said huh. I kept hearing the water go on and off. I'm like huh. And I walk off in there, and I caught Devorey in mid flight. Diving into the tub. He saw me and he just like bucking and fell into the tub. I said, here, Devore, I mean Damien on the other side of the tub, cheering him on. <laughs> Smiling. Water was all on the floor because they had to keep filling the water, filling the tub back up because they kept splashing the water out. And I'm looking like learn, learn an experience. I said, I'll never do that again. I'm gonna stay in there. And, you know, but those are the times that they say, you no, know, they'll say, oh, yeah, I remember that. I said, no, you don't. He said, yes, I do. Yeah, because we were like, they, they tell us where we live and where they live. I said, yeah, I guess you could remember. You were about four, five years old. But caught him in mid-flight diving into the bathtub. Thank y'all for nothing happen. But, but this, is, this is what it means to be a good parent, a good father. Look, they, they, they'll, stay, they'll stay with your children for the rest of their lives. Amen. 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 You know, I, I, I was hoping to remember me teaching them how to defend themselves wouldn't stick. I, my hope. And, but, you know, boys are boys. They don't remember everything, thank goodness. They don't, they don't remember, you know, the... The tactics I taught them to say thank y'all way for that. <laughs> but when we hear, we're taught moreover yeah. on how to be. It teaches us everything from A to Z yeah. on how uh, about how to how to, what type of parent to be, what type of uh, brother to be, what type of husband, what type of wife to be. Yeah. Amen. Amen. You see, Hallelujah. I even talked to them. Sit, sit. I sat at the table, talked to them about hygiene. Amen. You know. It, you talk, especially with, well, I ain't going to say especially because I don't, like I said, I don't have a girl, so I don't have nothing to base it on. But you, with boys, you, you, uh, you teach them, you know, because when they get to reach a certain age, they got their plan, they're going to come in a little, you know, little strong, a little, little musty. You, know, you, know, you, you don't want to going to tell them, hey, get in there and take a shower. They don't smell it. C coming in outside, coming in, oh, they smelling like outside. What well, well, my wife always say, uh -huh. you going to take a bath, you smell like outside. Uh -huh. <laughs> but we, but even to the point where you, where you, hey, don't, take them shopping, take them shopping for shoes, take them shopping for suits. Don't be afraid to do do these things. And also, we as parents, not just fathers, but parents, period, be a a, a person of your word. At all possible, if you say you're going to do something with them, do it. Now we know things come up. You know, sometimes maybe you don't you don't get off on work on time, uh -huh, yeah. or maybe something requires you know something from the church requires you to do it. Mm -hmm. right. But if it's something that you requires you to do it, or you can take it, take them with you, Amen. take them with you, so they'll right. learn that also. Right. You know, that's why that's why that's why I keep see, the only basis right now that I have is I keep telling Davion the same thing. Yeah. See, if you got to go up to the church to do something, take your daughter with you because she needs to see. As much as spiritual things as she can, right. as holy things she can, so she can, so she can, so you teach her to be strong. Yes. Until things get better in, in your home, right. you need to you need to be that 
it has to be, you need to be their mother and their father in some, in some areas. You no, know, the, the teacher be, be strong because she gonna, she gonna, she's going to need that and she's going to remember that. No, because no, no, Satan comes all the time. You know, you said, you no, know, there, there came a point in time where, you know, this is what I'm telling you, there came a point in time where you didn't see the arguments in the house with me and your mom. You know, early on, you saw those things. Even when we first got into church, you saw them things on occasion, but it was a point in time where you didn't see those things. Why do you think you didn't see those things? It's because of what we learned here. You know, what, what we were taught, what, what we were taught here. Just do, do Satan come? Yes. He comes all the time. He'll come, wake up in the morning and tell, he'll, He's gonna tell. He's gonna tell the husband something about the wife. He's gonna tell the wife something about the husband. He's gonna say, "Why you marry her?" Right. She could be laying down there asleep, and you're looking at her. You just all of a sudden you just get a say the taste. Say, "Look at her, slobbing and everything." You didn't, you didn't. That's not what you signed up for. No. Maybe she. Maybe the hair all over the head, and you know. Then she wake up and she got big pieces of big pieces of matter in her eyes and the corner eyes. I'm like, Ugh. Satan don't come to you and say that type of stuff. Because he will use in and everything to get you out of the spirit or to, to cause an argument in your home. Amen? We have to be, we have, you young couples. We, you, you hear, you hear, you hear, you hear the, uh, you, hear, you hear some of the, some of the uh, uh, older married couples here, to my, they don't argue. Okay, the other side, they, they don't argue. We don't argue. But we're not telling you Satan don't come. Satan comes all the time to try to get you out of the spirit with, with your spouse, with your family. I, I, you heard my testimony. You heard my testimony uh, a few weeks ago when I told you. I came home. Was not, I was okay. Wasn't nothing wrong. Wasn't even mad. I was glad to go home. But as soon as I stepped into the house, and Satan came to me and wanted to make me frustrated. And I didn't even know why. My wife looked at me and said, hey. And I, and I was, she was happy to see me. And I, and I said, hey, but see, my wife, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you how. I'm going to show you what Satan tries to do and when, when you talk of the spirit. Because, see, my wife, she, she knows me. Your, your spouse, you know, you know your husband. You know your wife. She knows me. She knew something was probably wrong. But she didn't say anything. She was waiting for me to come out of it. But at the same time, Satan telling her, to my, to my Ugh, what's wrong with him? Telling her to treat me a certain way because, and, and, and I'm walking around the house, I'm, I'm there for about five minutes. I'm like, what is wrong with me? No, I heard what, a, what Apostle Hurley says. See, the, the quicker we catch on, the better. Yeah, unfortunately, it took me five minutes to, to catch on. Luckily, thankfully, I didn't take it out on anybody. I'm in, I'm like, I'm in the kitchen, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my, putting my, half eating lunch up, I'm like, and I'm walking towards him, I'm like, what is wrong? You know. And then all of a sudden, Satan, trying to make me frustrated with just coming home. Just coming home, something simple as that, for nothing. Because it wasn't nothing. And, and, and my, my son was there, he was happy to see me. Even, even to the point where he did what he used to do when he was little. You know, whenever I used to go pick him up from school, I'd just stand right there across the street, they see me, I have to make sure they don't run before the cross will go out, tell them they can go. And they sitting there doing this. Aww. Then they just take off running. And they like neck and neck. I'm just backing up trying to brace for them. And then they just run and just grab it. And he did that. I'm like, hey, boy, get your <laughs> grown, old, grown, old grown butt down. <laughs> My daddy. I'm like, I'm like, I know he was just playing, but it was, it was funny. <laughs> Like that. Memories, just, just, just memories. These are the things I'm talking about. Yeah. Now, where you, you, you do with your family. You know, you young married couples, you listening, you hear. These are the things that you, you do with your family. You know, y'all, you know, you, know, you, you do both. We don't, you don't want to be. Like I said, there ain't nothing wrong with talking to them about the spirit. You talk to them about the spirit about Yahweh. But it's okay to do some, some of the natural things too. You know, just they, they, because you you making yourself a well-rounded right. parent yes. Yes. to your children, yes. amen. amen. And, I, and like I told you, those you got you got kids at home right now. Amen. If you ain't doing it, you better get on it. Yes. Because what what you do with them now is going to stick with them for the rest of your life. 
Yeah, you, you saw it. That's right. You, I mean, I look at, I look at, uh, I look at, I look at these. These are the two brothers I look at right now. I look at Evangelist Davis and Evangelist Randy because they got. I remember the young preteen boys, and I remember the teenage boys. And when I, <laughs> one day I remember I was dropping twins off at school. They were in high school. I said, okay, okay, Dad. I said, okay. And I went over and I kissed them. They said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, was you embarrassed? I'm like, no, but where that come? I'm like, I said, boy, I said, I'm your daddy. Give me, give me a hug. Give me a kiss. <sighs> but they like it. But I'm going to tell you what they do now. Whenever, like, if I go to work or if they drop me off at work or anything like that, in front of everybody. They get out and they hug me. They yeah. tell me, Dad, I, 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 I love you, Dad, before, before I, I go into my job. And, for, and I see people oh, yeah. looking. Yeah. And they're not ashamed. I know teenagers, you're going to be ashamed because teenagers. Yeah. Well, you know, you, you, you think somebody's going to say something, they do. They're going to say something. Somebody, right. oh, you, uh, your daddy hugged and kissed you. Then tell me, what, did your daddy? <laughs> just just on one accord with that like i mean i was before i came to church i grew up in a house where my dad and my brother and me we all gave each other kisses right. and hugs right. but like the devil does try to stop that kind of stuff yes. in families and, and and whenever i came in here there was a grown sister who came over to my apartment and I put my arm around her and was giving her a hug and a kiss because I, I know what I'm doing. I was doing it intentionally. And she said, I'm just not used. To, I, I didn't, wasn't given that kind of affection. So she was she didn't even know how to receive the hug and the kiss and the pat on the head and stuff like that. And I'm like, we can't do our kids like that. Amen. Amen. You know, we, we, um, we're planting a seed. Right. And, and unfortunately, some of us grew up in a home yeah. where there was no affection shown. Right. It, it, was, it was broken. Yeah. And, you know, whether you, if you take a step back and you look, I mean, in here I'm talking about, even in here some of us, some of us, some of our young people that, that has grown up in here didn't have that at home, unfortunately. After all they learned while being in here, they, they, for whatever reason, it didn't take. Because, you know, we all have our own mind about how we should do things, how we should raise our kids. Amen. You know, and not listening to the word, how it tells you how to treat you. It tells you that for a reason. Yeah. And then you want to get mad when a pastor tells you that he loves your kids more than you do. Yeah. You know, I, I got spiritually offended. Right. <laughs> and I was saying to myself, I said, no, you don't. And I'm going to show that you don't. So that's why I'm going to do everything right yeah. towards my son. Yeah. I'm going to raise him right, teach him right. right. Because and so he, he wants you to get yeah. spiritually yeah. offended. Yeah. So he try, he's trying to provoke you to do the right thing. Yeah. But you up there getting offended and just sitting back and not doing nothing, you fall right into Satan's hand. Yeah. And it's actually, unfortunately, it's having an opposite effect. Yeah. He wants you to get up and do something, but you decide to get up and do nothing. Well, well, you don't get up. You just sit there. Right. But he wants you to go up and do something. And mothers, with your daughters, you, got, you have to teach them. I, sometimes I wish I had a dog. Maybe she would be on lockdown, but I wish I had a dog. <laughs> Maybe. I know if, I, if it got to that point, I know, I know the Spirit would have said, you can't be like that, Pastor. You know, you got to allow your daughter a little freedom. I said, all right. I just let her go and buy, follow behind her in another car. So. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but we have, but we have, but we have, to, we have to teach our 
our young sisters on how to be young ladies, Amen. how to be respectful. You know, I, I, this don't matter what, whether you whether whether this don't matter whether it's, it's a girl or a boy. I've always told told my kids to say yes, sir, no, sir, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I was in the process of teaching Naya that when she was here, because I would say something to her, she would just say. She would just shake her head. I said, well, I said, what? I said, you don't shake your head at me. I said, you uh, just, you just tell me either yes, sir, or no, sir. Uh -huh. And it all it took me for two days. And I tell her something. And she'll shake her head. I said, what? Yes, sir. she said, yes, sir. I said, okay, that's why I want her. All it took me two days. Now, I hope, I told Damien. Yeah. I said, hey, make sure she's still doing that because we don't want we don't want our kids. Right. Right. To, no, yeah. yo, you, you can't let your kids raise themselves. That's right. And I heard somebody say once, they let their kids make their own decision. No, you do not do that. If your, maybe if your kids are 25 or 30, you let them make their own decision. But you don't let no teenager, no toddler, no preteen make their own decision. I said, well, they're going to decide what they want. I said, no, no, no. That's why we're in their lives to guide them. That's why the, the Spirit said, raise your children the Lord. And they should not right. depart. Right. Raise them in the way they should go. They should not depart. Now, sometimes they do depart. Right. And you got to look at yourself. Amen. What part did you play in it? Yes, and you got to be honest with yourself. Yes, and you got to see, did you do all that you could do to keep them in the faith? Amen? Amen. Amen. You know, Amen. Also, loving your children, you can't always give them That's what they want. Right. Parents? Yes. And young parents? Yes. Or parents, period. You want, you, when I say young parents, I'm talking about your parents you got uh, under 18 kids. Yes, yes. You can't always, you, you may want to, but you can't always give them what they want. Right. You got to give them what they need. That's right. right. You know, uh, right. you can't, and it's okay to be the fun parent. Mm -hmm. I, I guarantee you, I guarantee, I, 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 I'm, I'm going to go back to this. The reason why I go back to this is because I remember this. Some of the brothers saying this, uh, <laughs> We, whenever we have a church picnic, Amen. who are the ones that you see out of the brother? Who are the ones that you see cooking? That's it. Now, look. I'm not saying you, you, I'm not saying the one that don't. You have to learn how to barbecue because you no know, barbecue just ain't your thing. I can understand that. <laughs> what I am saying is this. You know, I, I, asked, I told my kid, I said, I told my son, I said, I try to teach him how to, you know, how to grill a, l a little bit. And I said, look, I said, look, I'm not going to always be around. I'm, and I get older, I'm going to start uh, barbecuing less. Right. You know, we all know, you know, you know, when you barbecue, that's like a, a and we, are, we look at that as a family time. To, yeah. Uh, to get together, so I said I'm not always be. I said somebody gonna have to. I'm gonna, I like. I'm gonna still like barbecue as I get older. Somebody gonna have to pick up the mantle. I don't want to have to go to nobody's house. Profit gonna. I mean, if I try to go to profit, profit gonna be there with, with probably more gray hair than me. And we ain't gonna want to barbecue and say, can somebody young barbecue? Learn how to barbecue? Somebody. You know, and I, I will. Profit did say that he said teacher Davis he get out there and, and do a little grilling. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> But, my, but, 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 but what I'm saying is this. You know, we, you can't always rely on the older uh, brothers or sisters to continue to get there, be there, and do, that, do it for you. It's time for our next generation to step up and take on some of that responsibility. You know, it's going to come a time where Sister Sheree ain't gonna, is not going to be able to get in there and do all that cooking. And the thing is, sometimes we have Mother Peggy in there doing the, uh, y'all don't know this, but sometimes she do the cooking too. She's 75 years old. Right, I mean, you, you enjoy the food, but who's going to pick up the amount of money? Like, is everybody going to, uh, you know, it'll be a, it'll a shame if we have a dinner, everybody brings salads and a cake. <laughs> I mean, you either eat healthy or you don't. Basically, that's what you, that's what, yeah. 
They have a choice. It ain't nothing in the middle. Ain't no meat. No nothing. It's, all you got salad on this side, a bunch of salad bowls, and a bunch of cake. On this side, you're going to see which one. Oh, yeah, snowball cake. And you either got a snowball socket tummy cake, snowball ch hot uh, chocolate cake, or you got a bunch of salad, a lemon cake. And you sitting there, hmm, which will I get? So what I'm saying is like, it's, it, uh, you young people, come on. I mean, I, hey, and, and I'm gonna tell you something. You can't hide behind children. Let me tell you why. Because your parents, remember when, they, when your parents, remember when you were little, they did all that cooking when you were little too? So you can't say it can't be done. They, 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 had, they had little kids running around there, but they found a way to do it. So now we're getting older. Amen. We're getting old. We're, we're getting old. It's time we want we want our younger generation to step up more. Amen. Amen. To help take the burden off our off our oldest uh, sisters. I mean, you know, we know. <laughs> You know they they are getting older. They not they not we not they not seniors yet, but they head in that direction. You know they still they you know they 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 moving. In some cases they probably closer to sixty than they are to fifty, and they are moving in that direction. Some probably already on hit sixty. Amen. But they are moving in that direction, so it's time for you to take the the burden off of them. I mean you have we have we have Mother Torres. She shouldn't be doing all the cooking. I don't think she does. She's going to be doing all the cooking in the house and all the cleaning. She's going to do her part, but it's up to her daughters to get in there and help out and do their part. I mean, I know you look at some, we look at our parents and we, we think they're going to remain like this forever. I had, a, I had a big reality check about a couple of years ago when I looked at my mom and I just stood and I just, <laughs> she saw me, caught me staring at her and I was just staring at her. And I was saying her hair, hair is all gray, right. and you know she don't move as fast, and uh, you know you, she got that elderly walk, yeah. where it's slightly hump, uh, uh, crossed over. Yeah. Right. And then I had to sit back and think, yeah. my mom, she's 84 years old, going to be 85, Lord's will this year. Man. And I had to look and think. Right. Even all the way up until she was like in her late 70s, she was, if I asked her, and she would, to this day she would try to do it, but I won't ask her to do it. Because she ought to, in, in my opinion, she always made the best potato salad. I would never eat nobody potato salad for her, so I would ask her, or the best sweet potato pie. I would ask her to make it. And she would get in there and go in there and try to make it. But I won't ask her to do that anymore. I said because parents, no matter how old we get, we're going to always try to do, do something for our children. If we are, if we, it may take us, what well, used to take us 45 minutes to do, it may take us four or five hours to do. We're going to try to do it. I mean, but, and I said, I said, I'm not going to do it. I said, I, I asked my mom, I said, mom, tell me what to do. My wife, she, she asked us, she said, tell, tell, tell me what to do. Now, Amen. See now, my, my wife she asked like, "Could we love her sweet potato pie?" And so she asked, she asked my mom how to make it. My mom tell her how to make it, and she right, she almost caught up. She, she, but what, but what I'm saying is, as children, we should honor honor our parents more than that, and we should honor our el, our 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 elders in the church more than that. Amen. Amen. I know I I had I I I had a. I'm, 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 I don't know. Spirit just went this way. I wasn't gonna go to a scripture, but it just went this way because I'm looking out and I'm seeing all the young faces in the church, Amen. and we have to be stronger, especially here. Amen. We have to be stronger here and be good examples here for those in love, because we see how they struggle, Amen. how our young people are struggling. I yes, know the the our young couple. That new in the church yes. would be <clears throat> Lee and Selena, mm -hmm. you know, as far as the faith. Oh, yeah. right. And we have, to, we, have, we have to show them on what type of husband and wife to be. Yes. 
have to show them on what type of parents to be to their children. Amen. Amen. Not to be, Amen. not to be afraid to discipline them. Don't let them make the decisions. Yeah. You, the parent, you make the decisions. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Teach them on how to respect yes. their elders. Yes. Even, even in in the world. When I used to take my kids mm -hmm. to go get their haircuts, I taught them. I say, I always think the barber for giving you your haircut. Yes. And they used to, when they get out the chair, they also, they, and I say, don't address them by their name like everybody. Like you see everybody else address them by their name. Right. I always gave them their last name. I say, you address them by Mr. So-and-so. Yeah. You know, even like I got a classmate. <laughs> I know what he does. Whenever, whenever like one of my sons may go there, he, he cuts her. He has a barbershop. Whenever he, he, they go there, they try to address them by his last name. And he say, don't call me that. Right. I say, I don't care what he say. You call him that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, you know it, it was a back and forth <laughs> for a long time. I said, I don't care what his name was. His name was Ace. I said, I don't care what Ace is saying. You call him Mr. F uh, Fulton. Yes. I said, you call him that. He said, and then they they call him. They say yes sir, no sir to him. Yes. Right. I mean, I said, I said that's what that that's what we have to start teaching our children. Yes. We we are getting away from that. Yes. But we got but we have to be the parents. That Yahweh showed us to be. It's because we're not listening all these years. Why do you think all these young married couples are suffering right now? Amen. Amen. You, you, we as parents, we have to look at ourselves. Amen. What part, if any, did we play? Amen. And, and it's a hard thing. It's a hard thing to swallow. It's a hard Amen. pill to swallow. Amen. You know, we, we'll look, look at what part that you play now. I look at both of my sons. I'm just going to use myself as an example. Right. I, look at, I look at both of my sons. Yeah. And I look at how their life is. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, one of my sons, my oldest son, he could be here more. I, I respect and admire his work ethic because he has a desire to want to help people. But that I, I, I tell him all the time, is that desire is good. But are you putting God first? Right. And, I, and I put that question to him every week. Yeah. Now, he's, a, now, he's an adult. Yes, I can't make him Amen. serve Yahweh. Amen. But I can, always, I can I continue to put on his mind right. what we believe right. and how he was raised. Yeah. You can't put things of this world before God. And I tell him, I say, you want to be blessed. Right. Are you putting God first yeah. in everything that you do? Right. I know you say you, you read on the job. Okay. You, you pray on the job. Right. I say, but still, you need to come to the house yeah. and hear what God has to say. Right. If, you, if your job is making you work on church days, if you're sincere, because I'm not, because only he knows if he's sincere or not. Right. If he's sincere, you would talk to God as Yahweh to make a way for you to yes. be at church. Amen. 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 Yes. I look at the situation with my son in, in love. Right. I know how I raised him. Yes. I know how me and his mom raised him up. Right. Amen. He always said that he wanted a marriage like me and his mom. Yes. I said, you do you, they barely remember now. I said, but do you remember how our marriage was at the beginning? Yes. Especially before we knew the Lord. Yes. Amen. You going? He's going through some things right now. Yes. But if he keep remembering what I taught him, That's right. remember what his mama taught him, yes. and remember the instructions that I gave him, yes. and then remember the instructions that Apostle Washington gave him, yes. he's going to come through this all right. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's why we always got to bring our kids back yes. to what was taught here, yes. what you taught him, what the Spirit taught them. Hallelujah. And that's what's going to save them. Now we know all our kids won't listen because our kids, they got their own mind. They got their own thoughts. They, they think they got a better way or new age way of doing things. That we probably old school. Old school is the best school. 
If you ask me. I always put the question to my, you, you, I charge you as parents. Put the question to your kids. Just like I put the question to my kids. When I gave you instruction and you did what I said, did it work out or did it fail? Amen? And I said, now if it failed, you let me know that it failed. Now I gave my, I gave my opportunity. And I, I, I still tell, it, tell this to them to this day. I give them my turn and say, think about it. Just don't answer yes because you think that's what I want to hear. Right. I want you to sit there and you think about it. Yes. What I, well, when I gave you instructions, because I'm being led by the Spirit, yeah. whenever I talk to them about the natural and about the spiritual, I'm still going to be Spirit-led. Yeah. And I ask you, I say, you think about it. Amen. When I gave you instructions, you followed my instructions. Amen. Did it fail? Now, when it failed, who fault was it? Was it because you didn't do everything you was told to do? Or was, it be, or was it because you did it and it just failed? They always came back to the same answer. Whenever we did what you told us to do, it worked out. That's how it is with us. Whenever we do what the Spirit tells us to do, it's going to work out. Even if it's something you don't want to do, it's going to work out. Yo, cause we all got our own mind on how we want to do things. But guess what? Right. Your mind is going to most likely fail. Right. Because you're not being spirit-led. Right. You're not letting Yahweh lead the way. Right. Look at everything that, you, that, you had, that you've done in your life when you, since you've been in here. Right. Amen. When you went contrary to oh, the spirit, yeah. what was the results of it? Oh, yeah. was, it, was, it was it Was it a success? No. Huh? Ask yourself that question and you be honest with yourself. Was it a success? Because let me tell you something. Tell me when you went contrary. I want to know. If you have to, pull me to the side at the church. Tell me when you went contrary to the spirit that you succeeded. But when you obeyed the spirit and everything, even when you didn't see a way, did it work out? Amen. Because the spirit don't fail. Yes. This flesh fails. Yes. That's right. When we have our own mind and not follow the spirit, our mind fails. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to tell you something. What my grandfather used to always tell me. Hard head makes a soft behind. You got a spiritually hard head, you feel to get a whooping every time. You have a spiritually soft behind. Because you don't want to do what the Spirit tells you to do. Because your way is better. Has it worked out for you so far? No. Why do you think that song said God's way is the best way? You got to hold on to your chain. Sometimes we, it's hard for us to hold on. We get impatient. We all get impatient. Because right now, this, this country is a... Is a Result is a right now uh, country. We want it now. Even down to the food. We go to restaurants. Oh yeah. We want it right now. <laughs> food takes time to cook. Yeah, we want it right now. You know, I, uh, on, on my job, like uh, over the weekend, we had a we uh, I was I had I, I was part of a situation. It was a big event, like a, some type of gala, and so um, we were responsible for checking people in. So of course it was a line, but you had people that didn't want to wait in the line, right. Amen. as always. Yeah. So we had a couple of people come up there to the front of the line. To my, to my, well, I just didn't want to wait. I'm sorry, but don't you think all these people ahead of you don't want to wait? <laughs> it's not right that you can come up and somebody you don't want to wait, you want to go on and get in. That's not, it's, that's not fair. And we just had to sit there, we just, me and my coworker, we just stood, stood there and just kind of looked at her. I'm like, <laughs> and the, <laughs> the people over here was like, we don't want to wait either. We had several people do that. And we have to explain to them, well, I'm sorry, but it's a line. You have to wait. You have to be patient. But if you be patient, you will get in. I know 
It, I mean, I know sometimes 30 seconds can seem like 30 minutes. And I, cause I've been there before. I mean, I, I, I've been up like when you go to a grocery store, you see that long line. You say, oh. then when you get behind somebody with a basket full, and then you, you start you start looking at other lines and see, you know, shorter. Then, it, then you you think because you think you got it in the short line, cause your line was short, but other line was long. You got a short line. Then that person had a full basket, and then all of a sudden the mother long long line started going by fast, and you like. If I would have got behind that person, I would have been at the register. But that person at the register right now. I'm sorry. Sorry. Our life is a series of lines. No matter where we go. That would be, so we got to be patient. See, the one thing I'm glad, and I was, uh, one thing I'm glad about, I don't, one thing I do not miss about driving trucks, I'm sorry, but I, I do not miss being stuck in traffic. <sighs> sitting there. The one thing I hate most is being stuck in traffic at night. I'm like, shouldn't everybody be at home sleep? Why the traffic? And I remember, I remember, I remember being a possible. We were, we were, we were, we were headed up to Lubbock, and I think we were somewhere around close to Cisco or somewhere around there. All of a sudden, it was, it was a long line, yeah. traffic. Then it just turned into one lane. And <laughs> Apostle was asleep. Then he, when he heard me hit the brakes, he woke up and started you know, doing this. That's what's going on. I said, I don't know. Traffic. He was like, I said, you go back to sleep if you want to. He said, I'm up now. <laughs> And we just in there steady moving. I'm like, so I have to tell myself, because I was like, I want to, I was trying to figure out a way to exit off. I was like, he started looking on his phone, seeing was an alternate route. I said, I said, it's, I said, it's moving pretty good, so we might as well just stay here. I want, believe me, I want to get off too. And so we, it didn't move pretty good, we just, but we just had to be patient. And we got up there and, you know, thanking Yahweh that it wasn't us. Got up there and saw 18 wheeler hanging off one of the bridges, like the, uh, the, the front of the 18 was hanging off the bridge, but the trailer was on the road, so it had to move down. And I'm thanking Yahweh saying, hopefully nobody was too seriously hurt. But not being patient, not being patient. Just the other day, coming down 114, uh, y'all know if you come like coming from, you know, uh, remember ATCLE? Coming down 114 in, in, uh, in um, South Lake, and it got traffic, start backing up. So people started cutting across the grass to get to the service road. And I thought, I thought about it for a split second. Then I said, I said, no. And then, I, then I looked again. Everybody that cut across, police was right over there waiting, flagging them, pulling them over. There was about five or six police with motorcycles, police, policemen, and police car. They, they were pulling them over and putting, getting them tickets. I said, whew. Cause I, cause I, I hit the signal, then I put it back. Cause I'll get ready to do the same thing. <laughs> I said, nope, they gonna do that. Not being patient. So now they, now they, they wait even longer. Now they got a ticket to, uh, uh, to pay for, but not being patient. But, but we are, we are instant right now type of people. And we got, that's why I said, that's why the scripture said, let patience have her perfect work. But when we let it have it, it, it's perfect work in our life. Things work out. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And that's all y'all always. Uh, gosh. That time went by fast. Yeah. I think that's all right now. Amen. I can, I can say I can say it could be continued, but you see. Amen. I thank Yahweh for, for being here. Yeah. And let's remember, we are a spirit led. People, we thank I, I, I thank Yahweh all the time for I was for His Spirit being in here. We 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 have to let the Spirit guide us because that's the only way we're going to have peace and that's the only way we're going to the things are going to work out for us. Amen. Amen. And at this time, as our Deacon Daisy will come on and lead us further in our service. Amen. That is why I was saying we by saying praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh, saints.
Thank y'all for the teachings of the house, the teachings that you always given us. Let's all remember to take them and apply them to our lives, and remember we don't have time for Satan. Amen. 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 We're not going to prolong the time. We're going to get ready to move further into the service. Let all the saints stand and uh, stand and uh, take out your tithe and offering, and let's lift it up unto Yahweh as we go on to prayer. Amen. Father Yahweh. We come before you and we thank you for all things, Lord. Thank you for the word you brought forth this evening. We thank you for the tithing and offering you've blessed us with in this land. We pray that you accept it, Lord Yahweh, as we give it with a full heart and a clean heart. We give it willingly unto you for the furtherance of your gospel. Please take it, bless it, and multiply it. In the name of Yeshua Messiah, we all say, Amen. Turn the service to the hands of the ushers.
thank Yahweh for the offer that went up. Those that had to give, thank Yahweh. Those who didn't have to give, may Yahweh bless you to give next time. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to go further into the service. Do we have any announcements? Praise Yahweh. Um, Sister Risa needs to see all the sisters after service. Um, and also, we want to wish the prices a happy 12th anniversary today. Any other announcements? Praise Yahweh, Saints. Uh, my classmate had uh, me the other day was asking can uh, was asking can can, uh, can you keep her in prayer about her uh, this is about her dad whether he be able to stay in this country or not. So I was letting her know that the church could pray for you that you know, uh, it be Yahweh's will. Uh, if it be your will, Lord, make a way. At this time, are those any of those who are uh, sick or need a prayer, uh, please stand and come forth. If not, let us all rise as we get ready to depart. Let us bow our heads and lift up our voices unto Yahweh. Father Yahweh, we come before you this evening. We thank you for your word, Lord. For it reaches deep within our hearts, Lord, farther than any other thing. Thank you that we were able to take this and apply it to our life. Thank you for giving us everything we need to fight safe. And tell him to get behind us and keep him underfoot. For we know that this is only a temporary stop in this lifetime, Lord. We know that we will one day take off this flesh. And if it be your will, we'll see you in peace. We thank you for the journey, Lord Yahweh. For all those who are sick and afflicted, Lord Yahweh, please heal them. Heal them according to their faith. As you did in times of old, so can you do today. For we are a continuation of your gospel. We thank you, Lord Yahweh, because your mercy endures forever. Let Israel now say, let his mercy endure forever. The house of Aaron now say, let his mercy endure forever. Let all those who fear Yahweh say, let his mercy endure forever. Let all the church say, Amen.